Now, normally on new server day, I like to do the big exaggerated drop a giant heavy server onto my desk, but this one, I can't even lift by myself. Back in May of this year, AMD introduced their latest Epic 4005 series processors. And rather than massive data center CPUs that you might be used to from them, these new chips are based on the AM5 socket, but still filled to the brim with Zen 5 cores. And while even one of these new CPUs would be a lot of fun to play with, Supermicro's new 3U MicroCloud might be 10 times better. Today's video is sponsored by Supermicro. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. When we look at servers for data centers and cloud providers, they're usually designed with as much compute density as possible. When you think highly dense servers, most people look to the current data center offerings. Massive dual CPU systems with up to 128 cores each and supporting multiple terabytes of memory with hundreds of PCI Express lanes. But when you consider an AMD Epic 9755 tips the scales at nearly $13,000 just for a single CPU, maybe monolithic computing isn't exactly what you need. While 256 cores and six terabytes or more of memory in a single server is extremely powerful, it's also not needed for every workload out there. And for data centers or cloud hosting operations, multiple smaller systems might be a far better answer. So what would a highly dense but distributed platform look like? Well. It would look a little something like this. This is the Supermicro MicroCloud AS3015MR-H10TNR, a 3U box that can hold up to 10 individual nodes of AMD's latest Epic 4005 series CPUs. I've got one of those nodes sitting right next to me on the desk here, loaded with AMD's Epic 4565P a 16 core Zen 5 chip with a 4.3 gigahertz base clock and a 5.7 gigahertz boost. That makes these potentially the fastest ECC capable CPUs that have ever been made. And the microcloud can hold 10 of them at a time. 10 individual nodes, even at only 250 watts each, do need a fair amount of power. And the main chassis isn't short on that. Around back, we've got four 2000 watt power supplies, so plenty of redundancy with upwards of 8000 watts of delivery potential. But why so much potential for only 2500 watts worth of nodes? Stick around, this box has a little secret we'll talk about later. As far as the rest of the specs, each node has a single M.2 slot, along with a pair of two and a half inch trays, which can support either SATA or U.2 NVMe drives. For storage, each node that I have here is sporting four 32 gigabyte sticks of DDR5 4800 EC4 unbuffered ECC for a total of 128 gigabytes. If that's not enough for you, you can also opt for up to four 48 gigabyte sticks for a total of 192 gigabytes per node. Of course, there's also a pair of PCI Express expansion slots here as well, offering both high-speed networking or potential GPU compatibility for small-scale AI deployments. Each node comes standard with a single IPMI port connected to an A-speed AST2600. But there's also a PCI Express X4 slot on the board to support custom form factor networking cards. On the nodes here today, we've got a pair of 10 gigabit RJ45 ports on an Intel X550 controller, offering up to 20 gigabit per second per node. Supermicro also offers a dual 25 gigabit card for this slot, meaning you'll likely never be short on bandwidth, especially if you plan on maxing out those NVMe trays. Swapping out the network card is pretty simple, with only a pair of screws holding it in place. If you needed 10 gigabit today, but wanted to opt for 25 gigabit down the road, upgrading each node would take only a couple minutes each. On the bottom side here, there's also a full PCI Express 5.0 X16 slot, and it'll support a standard half-height, half-length card like an NVIDIA L4, Intel Flex A40, or expansion for even higher speed networking. Maybe a 400 gigabit Connect X7? But I have a little surprise today, as we're not going to be testing with just the M.2. I got a special package in the mail earlier this week from Solidime, and inside are 12 of their brand new PS1010 7.68 terabyte U.2 Gen 5x4 NVMe drives. In total, I've got enough to put a pair of drives into six of these nodes, good for around 90 terabytes of raw capacity at Gen 5x4 speeds. So what do you say, we get some of these put together. So first up, we're gonna remove these two drive trays right here. So there's just two screws for each tray inside of the node. pop out just like that. 
Next up, we'll get our Solidime PS1010 drives out of here and ready to install. And the trays have these two little dimples right here where the screws would normally go. So they're actually used to capture the screw holes, just like that. And the drive just kind of slides into place and then you've got room for two screws on the side. And of course I put it in there backwards. Yep, I did. <laughs> the uh, fingers go towards the uh, cutout side, not the locking log side. All right, now we have one. And with that, the drives just slot right back into place. There we go. And there we go, right around 15 and a half terabytes of NVMe flash storage inside this one node, giving the entire 3U server about a 150 terabyte capacity just with these 7.68 terabyte disks. Moving back over to the PCI Express bracket over here, this is held in with five screws. There are three along the top and then two along the side. Now, like I said, you are free to install any half height, half length single slot card that you need here. I don't think anyone would ever install an eight year old Tesla P4 into the server, but that's the closest example I have on hand today. And as you can see in this footage that I shot earlier, it's a perfect fit when the node is put back together. All told, the amount of compute and storage you can cram into this box is absolutely insane. 10 nodes of Epic 4565P CPUs would give you 160 Zen 5 CPU cores with up to a 5.7 gigahertz boost clock and up to 1.9 terabytes of DDR5 ECC memory. In theory, you could also install some of Solidime's 122.88 terabyte SSDs and cram this with up to 2.4 petabytes of flash into the single 3U box, along with dual 100 gigabit networking per node in the PCI Express X4 slots. Looking at our slightly more humble configuration here, we're still sitting pretty well for a cloud hosting solution. We've got 16 CPU cores, 128 gigabytes of memory, a pair of Solidime 7.68 terabyte U.2 PS1010 NVMe Gen 5x4 drives, and dual 10 gigabit ethernet per node, making this a quite formidable solution for dynamic hosting environments. I'm planning on doing some testing in the next video as a Ceph cluster, spreading the storage and compute across multiple nodes. So make sure you're subscribed to really see this thing in action. But again, the microcloud is designed for exactly that, on-demand virtualization or container spin-ups and single vCPU solutions for simple hosted services. Having lightning fast single threaded performance across every CPU core makes this platform a no-brainer for use cases like that. Speaking of performance, I'm gonna give you some of the basic test results that I have here today, but again, the Epic 4565P is essentially a Ryzen 9950X, but with ECC memory support. It's got a base clock of 4.3 gigahertz, a boost clock of 5.7, along with 64 megabytes of L3 cache and a 170 watt TDP. Like I said, I haven't spent a lot of time benchmarking this CPU individually yet, but I did go ahead and run it through Cinebench just to see where it would fall in line with some more traditional data center CPUs from AMD. And the results are downright astounding if you're looking more towards single threaded performance needs. I took a look at three different processors just to give some general idea of where this Epic 4005 CPU lands. First off, the Epic Rome 7742, a second generation Zen 2 64 core processor. In Cinebench R23, we get a score of 52,765 to the 4565P's 41,155. So yes, the Epic Roam processor wins, but keep in mind this test is between a CPU with 128 threads to just 32 threads on the AMD Epic 4005. The Epic 4565P is 78% as fast as an AMD Epic Roam 64 core processor, or to put it in other terms, it would replace 99.8 Epic Roam CPU threads with this one 16 core part. But that's just in multi-threaded performance. What about single-threaded? That is where the Epic 4565P absolutely shines. We get a score of 2,233 to just 851, or around 2.6 times faster. 
I also pulled up results from the AMD Sienna 8534 PCPU, which also has 64 cores, but based on Zen 4C efficiency cores, as well as the AMD Genoa 9554, which is the full Zen 4 big fat CPU performance cores. And the results are basically exactly what you would think. The AMD Epic 4565P absolutely wipes the floor when it comes to single-threaded performance, even off of Genoa, which was a massive step forward for AMD overall. We are almost three times faster than the AMD Sienna and 1.7 times faster than the AMD Genoa 9554. And even when it comes to multi-threaded workloads, this CPU is hanging even with the 9554 being basically half as fast. That means this is equivalent to about 62-ish cores of AMD's Zen 4 Genoa out of a 16-core package. I love this chip. But I promised you a special feature earlier in this video from this server, and I think it's about time we reveal that. The eagle-eyed among you might notice that there are only eight nodes in the server instead of ten. And the reason for the available power is because you can opt between two different models of nodes. One designed for compute, which is the one that I've been showing off, and one with room for a full-length graphics card up to 400 watts. Now these nodes are twice as thick as the compute nodes, so you can only install up to five of them in a single 3U chassis. But because they're interchangeable, that means you can mix and match them to fit your needs. In my chassis here, I've got a total of six compute nodes along with a pair of GPU nodes loaded up with all the same CPU, memory, storage, and networking infrastructure that I went over earlier. Right now we've got this loaded up with a Radeon Instinct MI210, which is a CDNA 2 based GPU with 64 gigabytes of HBM2E memory. If you wanted to distribute this in a cloud system with dynamic hosting ability, this GPU is also compatible with MXGPU, meaning you can split up individual CPU and GPU instances based on your client's needs. A single GPU isn't going to give you a ton of GPU infrastructure, but if you have, say, eight different clients that wanted to run their own inferencing server with eight gigabyte models, you could split this card up eight different ways and give it to eight different clients off of this single node. So then, Supermicro's latest iteration of their MicroCloud server. I've been saying for quite some time that enterprise and data center hardware has been skyrocketing in price and placing itself not only outside the reach of a lot of businesses, but outstretching the needs of most businesses as well. A medium-sized business might not need 256 cores and six terabytes of memory to operate, let alone having all of that hardware in a single box. They might prefer more redundancy across multiple machines in a multi-node box like this. The MicroCloud is an extremely dense solution when it comes to both compute and SSD storage potential, while keeping the cost of the system somewhat reasonable. And for a medium-sized business, I'd much rather have 160 cores spread across 10 individual nodes rather than sinking all of my money into a single system with absolutely no redundancy. And like I mentioned earlier, for cloud hosting solutions, being able to sell customers the latest Zen 5 CPUs with 5.7 gigahertz boost clocks means potentially a higher ratio for over-provisioning, selling more CPU space to more customers with less hardware overhead. And that is a win-win all around. For more information on the Supermicro MicroCloud AS3015MR H10TNR, make sure to check out the link in the video description. As always, if you like this video, make sure to drop it a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And let me know down in the comments, what would you use a server like this for? Do you like the GPU node option or would you stick with just the compute blades? Sound off down below. And that's gonna do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Beer for today is not a beer at all. It is a traditional Moscow mule. A little bit of vodka, a little bit of lime juice, and a lot of ginger beer. Filled to the brim with ice. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take the time to hammer crush my ice, so this is just the cubed ice that you get from the store. But, uh, Moscow mule. Cheers, everyone. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, really hard to beat a Moscow mule in the summer.